Hi, I'm Hong Lei from Google Research. Today, I will introduce our work on cross-positional attention for debiasing clicks. User clicks are often used to serve as implicit feedback to train a relevance model. However, there could always be some inherent examination bias in the user click logs that may affect the model quality. For example, an irrelevant item might be clicked more frequently simply because it was shown at a better position, which attracted more user attention, while a relevant item might not be frequently clicked only because it was not seen by the users. So it is crucial to accurately model users' examination behavior in order to mitigate the bias and thereby improve the model quality. Existing work on click models often make some restrictive assumptions on users' examination behaviors or on the web page layout. Probabilistic click models usually rely on a human-specified generative process, which encodes a lot of this kind of assumption. Uh, recent work on neural click models appear to be more flexible, but most of them still rely on the assumption of sequential layout or sequential user behaviors. So in this work, we propose a novel click model. And the basic idea is to make minimal assumptions about the user examination behaviors and web page layout and give the model more flexibility to learn the user behavioral patterns in a data-driven way. Specifically, we propose a cross-positional attention mechanism in click models. We also show that with a better click model, we can also learn a uh, better relevance model as well. So as a high level overview, we adopt a uh, two tower structure where we have a relevance score, which uh, estimates the item relevance simply from their feature vectors. And then we have an examination score, which estimates the, the user's intention to examine an item based on its position information or other surrounding items, position information, or, or the relevance information. So the final click probability of this particular item is obtained by taking the sum of scores from both scores, and then we use a logistic function to scale it to be between zero and one. And similar structure has been adopted uh, in many previous work on click modeling. So now the question, becomes how to instantiate these two scores. The relevant score is a straightforward one. So we can simply instantiate this module by a feedforward network, which takes the item feature vector as input and outputs relevant score. Notice that after the entire model is trained, we can serve this relevance module as a standalone online scorer to predict the item's relevance and rank them accordingly. For the examination score, there are multiple factors that could affect the user examination behaviors. So whether a user will examine a certain item it depends on its own position, but could also depend on other items in the neighboring positions. So most existing studies here would choose to simplify this part by assuming that users will follow a sequential order to examine items. And here we introduce a more flexible mechanism based on attention. So for each item J, we're going to derive two attended embedding representations to encode the signals from other items. The first one, we're going to derive an attended position embedding, where the query is the item J's position embeddings, and the keys and values are going to be other items' position embeddings. So this attended position embedding aggregates the examination signals from, from the other items. And we also derive an attended item embedding where the values will now become their feature vectors, while the query and key still remain their uh, position, position embeddings. So this attended embedding representation will aggregate the relevant signals from the other items. With uh, all of these uh, attended uh, embedding representation, 
uh, we can now start to develop the examination score. So the examination score depends on three signals. The first one, of course, is, is the uh, position of the item itself. So we take the position embedding of the item J and feed it into a feature network, and we got a uh, examination score. And we also take the attended position embedding and feed it into the same tower and get another examination score. And finally, we're going to take the attended um, item representation. So remember, this one aggregates the uh, relevant signals from all the uh, surrounding items. And we take this and feed into the relevant score and get a relevant score. Um, and then we take all of these uh, three scores uh, to obtain the final examination score of this particular item J. We use the weighted sum where the weights are going to be trainable parameters. And the entire model uh, could be trained end to end with a cross entropy loss. And here are some uh, details of the parameter configuration of our model you can refer to the paper. We conduct experiments on two data sets. The first one is a Yahoo data set, which is a public to rank data set. And there are human judged relevance labels available, but there are no clicks data. So we have to simulate the clicks based on the several uh, simulation models. And then we have Chrome Web Store data set, where the task is to recommend uh, extensions for non-signed in users in Chrome. Uh, for this data set, we do not have human judge relevance labels, but we do have uh, quick data. So we, we conduct online A-B experiments to verify the effectiveness of our models. So for the first data set, for the Yahoo data set, we have to simulate the user clicks. So what we did uh, is we first used a SVM rank trend with 1% of relevance labels, and then use this uh, trend ranker as a weak ranker to generate the initial ranking. And then we simulate the user clicks based on this initial ranking, and of course, based on the item's um, relevance. So we used the uh, following three uh, simulator. The first one is a position bias model, where the examination probability is independent from other items. So it only depends on the current position of this particular item. And then we have dependent click model where the examination probability depends on the relevance of, of previous items. So this corresponds to the sequential assumption of user behavior. And we also propose a novel model where uh, after a click, the users can explore surrounding items that could be uh, the ones above or could be the ones below. So this is a, corresponds to a non-sequential user behaviors. So first we look at the results for the uh, click prediction task on Yahoo dataset with, the, with all of these uh, synthetic clicks. So in this task, the model's click scores are used to predict whether a user would click on a certain item. And there are several baselines. The first one is no pause, which is a clicked model that does not use uh, any position information to capture the user examination bias. Uh, and we have pause, which only uses uh, each item's position information and corresponding to the assumption that user's examination bias is only related to its own position. And then we have LSTM, where we use the previous item's feature vectors uh, for the examination score. And that corresponds to a sequential assumption of the user behaviors. And from the table, we can clearly see that all the models that actually consider examination bias are performing better than no pause baseline, which shows that they can effectively model the bias uh, to some extent. LSTM and our proposed XPM model tend to be more powerful across different click simulators, specifically for uh, CPM uh, where the simulated user behavior is non-sequential, our proposed model can significantly outperform the LSTM model. So that illustrates the capability uh, of learning this kind of non-sequential user behavioral pattern. 
we also conduct a relevance prediction task. Uh, in this task, uh, we use the relevance score output by the, the relevance score uh, of each, each model, and we use them to rank the items. You know, we measure the performance based on the human judged uh, relevance labels. And we use some ranking metrics like in this GA5 and in this GA10. So again, um, our proposed model can outperform uh, all of the other baselines across multiple click simulators. And these results show that our proposed model is robust and effective. For uh, the CWS dataset, uh, we also evaluate uh, the performance of all the models on the uh, click prediction task. Um, so um, the XPA model we proposed can actually outperform all the baselines on this data set as well. So that verifies that the user click behaviors on the, on the real world data set is actually more complex than the sequential assumption. And our proposed model can actually uh, capture this kind of complex pattern. We also visualize the perplexity measure on, uh, on different positions separately. Apparently positions that are close to the top uh, seem to be more difficult to predict because they all have the higher perplexities. But notice that that is also where uh, our proposed model can actually uh, have the, the most advantage compared to all the other baselines on these kind of positions. So for the relevance prediction task, uh, because for CWS data set, data set, we do not have uh, the human judged uh, relevance labels. So we have to do some sort of uh, online experiments. So we run online A-B experiments for some of the methods for one week, and we use uh, the relevance scores predicted by each model to rank extensions. And we serve this uh, ranking in the first uh, recommendation uh, module for the CWS homepage. And we measure the performance by their click-through rate. Uh, so no pause is one of the baseline. Uh, and we show the, the other methods uh, performance by their relative improvement compared to no pause. So both POS and XPA can significantly outperform uh, the no pause method. And that shows the importance of performing some kind of unbiased learning when you're actually using this click logs as implicit feedback. So there are indeed um, severe uh, examination bias there. And moreover, our proposed XPA can actually significantly outperform the POS uh, method, which again verifies that the examination bias in the real world data set um, is more complicated than a sequential assumption. And our model can better capture uh, and mitigate this kind of bias. We also visualize the attention metrics learned by the, uh, the XPA model from the CWS data set. And we can clearly see that there are some kind of uh, dense submetrics for every eight extensions that actually corresponds to the CWS homepage UI, uh, where every eight extensions are sort of clustered into a block. Okay, to summarize, we propose a cross-positional attention mechanism to model user clicks. The mechanism is sufficiently flexible to capture different kinds of user click behaviors and can be applied to arbitrary layout. And we perform experiments on the whole data set with different user click simulation models. And that shows uh, the robustness and flexibility of our model. And we also perform offline and online experiments on the real world CWS data set that further illustrate this, the uh, effectiveness of our model. In some future direction, uh, like we can, we plan to train our model with ranking losses to further optimize the ranking metrics, or we can think about uh, using some simplified attention mechanism uh, to reduce the complexity. Thank you.